Hey there, folks. Here I am again. It's Sunday and round five-ish. Uh, and I'm doing another Commissioner in a Car episode. Uh, this isn't going to be a very long one, but we had a lot of events happening this week that uh, people don't, you know, if you're not an avid follower of politics, you may not know about. Uh, and uh, the three big ones, um, well, the two big ones were the uh, uh, that were planned <laughs> were the OCDC, Onondaga County Democratic Committee Reorganizational Meeting. And we also had our judicial conventions uh, uh, or uh, meeting as well uh, for our Supreme Courts. And as I said last week, these at these meetings, we choose our officers. At the OCDC organizational meeting, we choose our officers uh, that will be uh, the um, uh, officers for the next two years at the OCDC. And that's including uh, my my. Uh, job as well <laughs> and uh and then at the judicial conventions we chose our next supreme court uh justices that will be on the ballot this fall for you to vote for so first up at the ocdc meeting um pam hunter was uh elected chair jimmy monto was elected secretary uh mike lapointe was elected treasurer and i was nominated for another term as elections commissioner now, you notice I said elected for them and nominated for me. The reason uh, I'm I'm nominated is because my final approval is done at the county legislature. That The elections commissioners, while we vote on them uh, as a party, the party votes on them to do the nomination, that nomination is forwarded to the county uh, legislature. Uh, so that won't uh, be official until they approve it, um, usually. Uh, these types of things is the parties respect each other's choices. And I know the county uh, Republicans also had their reorganizational meeting and uh, uh, renominated their current uh, elections commissioner, Michelle Sardo. Uh, we've had a really good relationship for the last uh, two years. Um, and uh, we've uh, actually, we've worked together for six years now, but she's been commissioner for, I believe two, maybe three, but I believe two. And, uh, uh, she's, uh, um, uh, she'll be, uh, renominated and sent to the legislature along with myself. Uh, so then, uh, the judicial conventions happened on Monday. Those are the Supreme Court, uh, judicial conventions. They are, uh, how we put candidates on the ballot for the Supreme Court justices in the fifth judicial district, which has a ton of counties. Uh, mostly uh, Onondaga, Oswego, Jefferson, Herkimer, and I'm probably missing a county in there, or uh, I think there's another county, a county or two in there, but off the top of my head, I don't remember what it is. But uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, that happened on Monday, and our two main candidates that are out there uh, are Scott Del Conte and uh, Ted Limper. This is a second run for Supreme Court justice for both of them. They both have excellent shots at winning their Supreme Courts. I'm not sure if uh, another two people were put up as placeholders. I'll, I'll try to get that information for you because uh, that information goes up to the state board to certify. And we'll have a certification sometime this week, uh, I believe uh, tomorrow. Uh, or uh, uh, we'll have something at the Board of Elections that is transmitted to us telling us which candidates are on which ballot line, so on and so forth. But I know Ted Limpert and Scott Del Conte were the Democratic nominees, and we're going to, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you're going to hear from them, uh, you know, all all over the place. Uh, and they're, they're going to be great candidates. Um, but the big news that happened this week was uh, Joni Mahoney on Monday announcing her resignation uh, or intent to resign um, in for uh, county executive, and that happened on Monday. And but she won't actually be resigning until we believe close to October, uh, the end of October or beginning of November. That date has not yet been settled. I kind of waited to do a, a Facebook live on this to kind of see how the dust settled uh, to, on this, but uh, it brings up an interesting point of election law is the September 20th date. Um, that is a date that is in public officer law that says if a resignation or vacancy occurs before the September 20th date, 
then it uh, then that year you will have an election to appoint the vacancy. If it happens after September 20th, that vacancy is held till the next election, and then you go through your uh, charter or your your rules, depending on what political subdivision it is, to figure out how you put somebody in there for the remainder of that year. Um, with the county exec position, she announced it on Monday, which was after September 20th, but her intent to resign is not until the end of October. So it wouldn't have mattered when she announced. Uh, it matters when she's going to resign. And since she is not going to resign until the end of October, there is no election this year. Uh, there will be an election next year, which is when her term was bound to end anyways. Uh, and uh, and so there is no special election. There is no election to fill a vacancy. It's just a normal election for another four-year term. So what happens in the meantime? Well, we don't go without a county exec. We're going to have a county exec. And the county charter says that the county legislature, by majority vote, appoints a replacement. There is no automatic replacement. It, uh, it, the county charter says that the county legislature has to appoint a replacement. If they are unable to, we do have a deputy uh, county executive, Bill Fisher, who can uh, you know, steer the ship until they do so. But I don't think that that's the case. And because of what happened later on Monday, right after Joni Mahoney um, and the news broke, Ryan McMahon, uh, who is the Republican uh, chairman of the Onondaga County Legislature, uh, announced his intention to seek that position. And he announced that intention with 11 legislators standing behind him. So... Uh, you only need nine votes, uh, and thus uh, it looks pretty clear that uh, Ryan McMahon will be our next county executive. He will uh, serve until November of, uh, well, he'll serve all of 2019, um, and there will be an election in November of 2019, at which time uh, I'm sure there will be uh, a an election f between him and whoever the Democratic nominee is. Um while the Democrats haven't always put up a county executive candidate in the past, the county has gotten bluer and bluer. But also, more importantly, uh, this is kind of going to be kind of seen as an open seat. Um, even though he'll have incumbency for a year, uh, it, it's not going to be seen as something that uh, was on the ballot. You know, he's not in, uh, you know going to be an incumbent in that sense. So anytime that happens, I think you're going to see... Uh, uh, some competition. Now it's way too early to know who that's going to be. Um, even at a week later, there's, you know, I'm not going to sit here and speculate on who the democratic nominee is going to be because we don't know. We won't know. Uh, in fact, and we shouldn't know we have 36 days until this election. And that's where our focus should be, uh, as a party, as me, as a commissioner, the County board. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, that's going to be the focus of the media as well, I hope. Uh, although I'm sure there'll be some speculation. Uh, there always is. But with 36 days left, we have to focus on this year's election. So that is what's going on uh, this week. It was a busier week than we thought. Um, I'm very honored that uh, my colleagues at the Onondaga County Democratic Committee uh, unanimously put me forward for a fourth term. I'm incredibly excited to work with uh, Pamela Hunter, who is uh, the out, or the new incoming chair, uh, and Jimmy Monto, the incoming secretary, and Mike LaPointe, who's re-elected as treasurer. I think we're going to do some good things together. I'm not an officer of the committee. I need to make sure, even though my election happened at the same time, they're the officers. They run the committee. I run the board. And uh, But I, of course, help, as I have helped. I'm a committee member. I've been a committee member for 25 years. I'm going to continue uh, with that, and I'm going to uh, continue to, uh, uh, you know, help the party in any way possible behind the scenes. My professional life, I'm going to help every voter uh, get to the polls this election, and I think that's uh, in every election. Uh, so, uh, you know, and that leads me – well, you know what, and I should mention one other thing, an important bit of news that broke Dave Valesky um, – announced that he is not intending to seek uh, 
re-election. Uh, if you remember, he lost his primary to Rachel May. Uh, and uh, Rachel, uh, on the Democratic line, he actually won the primary on the women's equality line. Uh, and he also had an independence line, which was uncontested. Um, so he could have continued a uh, primary for his state Senate seat. There was a lot of question about whether he was going to do so. However, he did an incredible thing for himself and for the party in announcing this week that he is not going to seek re-election. He doesn't want to split the ticket. And Rachel May will uh, be the undisputed, I guess, uh, Democratic nominee. Uh, but you will see Dave's line on the ballot. That That is an uh, unfortunate uh, thing with New York state election law is even after losing a primary on another line, there's no opportunity to remove yourself from the ballot unless you die. Nobody wishes a bill. You move out of the district. Uh, and I'm not even sure that that would work in this case because of the residency requirements. I'm not sure that would work. Um, or uh, get nominated for another office and that time is long since passed. And he's not a lawyer. He can't get nominated to a Supreme Court. And we see this, you know, you saw this with the Chris Collins case out in Buffalo. Uh, there's really no way to get off the ballot when this happens. And it's really a, um, a flaw in New York State election law. And I, it's something that I've advocated for. Uh, and I'm going to continue to advocate for in my dealings with legislators up in Albany. And I'm hopeful to convince my association, uh, both Republicans and Democratic commissioners, to advocate for this change as well. Um, because it's confusing to voters. And, uh, but I want to thank Dave for his service. I want to thank him for, uh, trying to do his best to, uh, not confuse voters and, uh, making this very hard decision. Uh, so lastly, um, you know, there's, I don't, you know, I don't see any questions, but obviously if there's anything that you have questions about, uh, comment whenever you want and I'll answer whenever I can. Uh, this will be up for another week until next Sunday when, uh, in a little preview of next Sunday, we're going to talk about voter registration. The voter registration deadline is October 12th. That is uh, a week, I'm sorry, two weeks from fr last Friday. So we have about 13 days or so, 12 days or so of uh, uh, until the voter registration deadline. So it's time to get out and get your friends registered if they're not registered. If you've moved, update your registration. If you want to change parties, like next year, you want to vote in a primary, you need to do that by October 12th. If you want to uh, be able to vote in this election and you haven't yet uh, registered, do it by October 12th. Now, you can check your registration. Go to www.ongov.net slash elections. Uh, that's the Onondaga County link, but if you're watching this from outside of Onondaga County and in New York State, you can look up your voter registration anywhere in New York State. Do not trust anything else on the web. Go to our website or, or a county board website that links to the New York State voter uh, registration, uh, the, the NICE voter system, because that is what is the most up-to-date information. Some of these uh, uh, services on other places have old data. We are processing our, our registrations as they come in. Uh, we're a little bit behind. All county boards of elections are a little bit behind right now uh, because we get so many in during the primary process and we can't register during the primary process. In fact, we were up to date as of August 20th and we had to stop uh, while we were in the entire uh, primary election season and just started registering people again on September 29th. Don't worry, we have the forms. They're time stamped in. We know where they are. Uh, they're all scanned in and we're our, our staff is working very hard to register those. But if you don't see it, your best bet is to stop down to our board, 1000 Erie Boulevard West, fill out a form, you're going to be registered to vote. You can also go to your My DMV account uh, and, and update that. Don't wait till August 12th. There's a history of the mm -hmm. My DMV. They've done uh, a lot of uh, great work on it, but it has crashed through high volume periods. So if you're waiting till 6 o'clock at night on August 12th, you won't be able to register if it crashes. And no, they won't extend the deadline. So you have up until August 12th. Uh, and Or you can go to our website again, on gov.net slash elections, and download a voter registration form. Make sure you print up the whole form. It's an 8.5 by 14 form. 
uh, make sure it either fits on your eight and a half by 11 sheet uh, by scaling it or you or you use uh, legal paper because you have to sign it at the bottom and if it gets cut off at the bottom, you will not be registered. You'll be uh, registered incomplete and we'll try to get you to come in and, and fill it out. But if it's not done before October 12th, you may not be able to vote this year. So get out there and get your friends registered to vote. Um, and uh, please make sure that you're going to see a lot of uh, advertisements this week and the next week uh, on social media about making sure people are registered. Share them. Let your friends know. They need to get registered. Um, if everybody out there who is a regular voter, like myself, were able to go get five to ten people who were not regular voters and make sure that they voted this year, we would break all kinds of turnout records. And then we would have a democracy uh, that is more representative of all of the people because we need to get everybody out to the polls this election. Uh, we're pretty fired up about it, and I know there's a lot of great campaigns out there working their butt off, but it, you won't be able to support them if you're not registered to vote. So make sure you do that. Thank you very much. This was another Commissioner in the Car, and uh, I'll uh, see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.